We are going to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of y equals x squared plus 2, y equals negative x, and x equals 0 and x equals 1. Well, x equals 0 and x equals 1 are vertical lines that are just telling us where to cut off um, this region. Okay? Um, so most of the time you're going to have to figure out kind of what it looks like or you're going to have to know that one function is on top of the other function. Uh, but for right now, I wanted to go ahead and give you the picture. So what we're going to be finding here is, and that is awful coloring right there, but we're just going to go with it. We are finding this area right here, okay? Between 0 and 1 for the x's, and x squared plus 2 is the top function, negative x is the bottom function. So all we've got to do is integrate from 0 to 1 of the top function minus the bottom function. And in this case, we're integrating with respect to x. So subtracting a negative, same as adding a positive. So let's integrate. x squared is x cubed over 3. I like it to be in standard form, so I'm going to take that x from the end and move it to the middle, plus 2x. We're evaluating from 0 to 1. So when we plug in 1, we get 1 third plus 1 half plus 2. When we plug in 0, we're going to get zeros for all those. Um, so let's see here. 1 third is 2 sixths. 1 half is 3 sixths. 2 is 12 over 6. So we've got... Yeah, 17 over 6. <laughs> 17 over 6 is the area between these two curves from 0 to 1. Okay, okay let's look at example 2. The area of a region between intersecting curves. Um, so the difference between example one and example two is in example one, they essentially gave us the bounds of our integration. They told us to go between zero and one. Example number two, all they do is give us the two functions, two minus x squared and x. So we've got to figure out, now it's pretty obvious on the graph, the way that I've got it here, that it's at negative two and one, but most of the time, they're not, they're, well, not most of the time, all the time, they're not going to give you the picture. Okay? They're not going to give you the picture, so you've got to realize, okay, well, these two functions are going to intersect, so let's find out where they intersect. Set them equal to each other. And this is going to allow us to find our bounds. Now, it's a quadratic. It's got to be equal to zero. I don't like a negative x squared, so I'm going to move everything to the right side. So I've got positive x squared plus x minus 2. And we're going to factor x plus 2 times x minus 1. So that means these two curves intersect at negative 2 and positive 1. Like I said, it's pretty obvious here on the picture. But if you don't have a picture, you're going to have to figure it out. Now, also, if we don't have a picture, how do we figure out which function is on top, so to speak? Well, after we figure out our bounds, I'm going to pick a number to plug into both functions between my bounds. Okay, so between negative 2 and 1, I'm going to pick a number, 0. Pick the easiest one that you possibly can. So plug that into both functions. f of 0 would be 2 minus 0 squared, which is 2. g of 0 would be 0. f has the bigger y value, so that's the function that's going to come first. So from negative 1 to 2, yes? Yeah, because I'm trying to figure out, obviously we can see, we can see on the picture that 2 minus x squared, if the picture wasn't there, how would we figure out which function to put first? Yeah, okay. So if we did not have the picture, after I find where they intersect, I'm going to pick a number between these two, negative 2, between negative 2 and 1, easiest one to pick is 0. I'm going to plug it into both functions because I want to see which one has the greater y value, which one's on top. Um, this one, we're comparing 2 to 0, so 
So odds of two, f of zero is two, so f comes first. So we're going to integrate from negative two to one of two minus x squared minus x. You've got to remember to subtract the function on the bottom. Now the good thing about this is the integration takes care of all the negative area and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about um, the fact that part of this is below the x-axis, part of it's above the x-axis. You don't have to worry about that. So let's integrate. Again, I prefer standard form. So negative x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 2x. Integrating from negative 2 to 1. So very similar to the function we just did. Okay. Because you always subtract the bottom function. So this is f and that is g. So it's always top minus bottom. Just like with your integration. Top limit minus the bottom limit. Okay, so when we plug in 1, we're going to get negative 1 third. Okay, you cube the 1 first and then apply the negative. Uh, minus 1 half plus 2 minus, okay, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and there's a negative in front of it, so that's positive 8. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. If you need to, you know, show where you're actually plugging in those numbers, knock yourself out. Here's a case of instead of getting the common denominator for everything, just combine your fractions that have the same denominator because in this case, negative one-third minus eight-thirds is negative nine-thirds. It ends up being a whole number. Negative one-third minus a negative, excuse me, not negative one-third, negative one-half minus a negative four-halves. That's adding four-halves, so negative one plus four is positive three over two. And two minus negative four is 2 plus 4, which is 6. So we've got negative 3 plus 6, so that's positive 3 plus 3 halves, which is uh, 3 is 6 halves, so 6 halves plus 3 halves is 9 halves. A lot of times these questions are calculator in just so you know, and you're going to have to deal with fractions, so let's get used to it. Okay? Now, what happens when your curves intersect at more than two points, and if we look at these two functions, for part of the time, one of the functions is on top, for the other part of the time, the other function is on top. So we're going to have to split this into two integrals. Okay? We're going to split it into two integrals. So, we've got to start by finding where they intersect. So we've got to set them equal to each other. 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x. So, polynomial, got to be equal to zero. Add x squared to both sides, subtract 2x from both sides, 3x cubed, those x squares cancel, minus 12x is equal to 0. Solve by factoring. This is going to be a GCF of 3x, leaves us with x squared minus 4. which factors further, x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we intersect at 0, negative 2, and positive 2. So again, obviously we're looking at the picture. We can see this, but let's approach this from a, they don't give you a picture, and we're doing it without the calculator. We need to check uh, negative 1. I would check negative 1 and positive 1. We need a number between negative 2 and 0 and a number between 0 and 2. So f of negative 1 would be negative 3 minus 1 
plus 10. Negative 4 plus 10 is 6. G of negative 1 would be negative 1 because it's negative x squared minus 2, so that's negative 3. So f is on top between 0, or between negative 2 and 0. And then we can probably assume that they're going to switch places, but they don't always. Uh, so let's try 1 as well. 3 minus 1 minus 10. So that is negative 8. G of 1 is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So G is on top for the second interval. So we have two integrals. From negative 2 to 0, our f of x function is on top. 3x cubed minus x squared plus 10x minus 10x. So that one comes first minus... You know, we haven't had to worry about parentheses yet, but this g of x function has two terms, so we need parentheses, or you need to go ahead and just change both the signs. Plus, okay, put your d of x, and then plus, we've got another integral from 0 to 2, and these two functions are going to switch places. Negative x squared plus 2x minus... 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x dx. So let's do ourselves a favor and simplify and then integrate. So within this first integral, I can combine those x squares. I've got negative x squared minus a negative x squared. So negative x squared plus x squared, those cancel. I mean, within the same integral, yes. Within that first integral, I can combine like terms before I integrate. It's just, it's just going to simplify my computations later. Okay. Uh, negative 10x minus 2x is negative 12x. Okay. So that really cuts down on what we actually have to integrate. And I'll do the same thing with the second integral. Okay, negative 3x cubed. The x squares cancel again. And this time we've got 2x minus negative 10x, so we've got positive 12x dx. Kind of makes sense that they're exactly the opposite, because we just subtracted the opposite way. <coughs> Okay, now we can actually get to the integration. 3x cubed, the antiderivative would be 3x to the fourth over 4 minus 6x squared. That one we're evaluating from negative to, negative 2 to 0. The other one is going to be almost exactly the same, just opposite signs. And that one's from 0 to 2. Whoops. Okay, so when we plug in 0, we're going to get 0, but it's important that we put it there because then we've got to subtract whatever follows. So negative 2 to the 4th would be 16. And negative 2 squared is 4. Plus the other integral when we plug it in, 2 to the 4th is 16. plus 6 times 4, minus 0. Now, be careful. All this stuff does not cancel. It looks like it does, but you can't forget about that negative in front right there. So we've got negative 48 over 4 plus 24, because we've got to apply that negative. And we've got another 48 over 4 plus 24. So 48 over 4 is 12, so we've got negative 12 and negative 12, which is negative 24, plus 24, plus 24. 
So one of those cancels 